Hey everybody, welcome to PT Final Exams Cervical and Thoracic Spine Mobilizations. This is meant to be a crash course, something very simple, something just to get you through, understand the quick and dirty, and move on so that you can study other things too rather than just puzzle about what in the world thoracic and cervical mobilizations are like. Again, crash course, there's a lot of information, there have been books written about this. I simply want to talk about the basics and the things that are asked on many practice exams so that you would know how to answer and you know carry that forward into uh, your your clinical careers and how to mobilize and how to think about cervical and thoracic spine alright so just a crash course on the anatomy this is the cervical spine as we look over here at the c-spine you'll notice that as a general rule the superior articular surface and the inferior articular surface, if I can draw it right, are at about a 45 degree angle. Now that 45 degree angle is important to remember because when you are mobilizing them, you're going to want to have the vertebrae travel in that direction, or mostly in that direction, in order to get the best mobilization. Because if you went, you know, let's say at the opposite 45, you'd not have as much mobilization, you'd have more compression. So you want to avoid doing that and do mostly moving in Ha mostly mobilize it in the direction of the articular surfaces as a general rule and so another thing to note is that the spinous process is relatively close in the same plane to the transverse processes which you can't see really well in this particular um, this particular view this shot of it uh, this comes from the old Gray's Anatomy textbooks but in essence it kind of shows the same thing that the transverse process you know the anterior tubercle coming right there basically this whole end transverse process is about right here and the spinous process about right there so again about on the same level now when we're talking thoracic vertebrae this is another key distinction as you note with the first thoracic vertebrae it looks a lot like some of the other cervical vertebrae and as the far the farther down you go in the spine the more it looks like regular or, or the more it becomes unique from the cervical and becomes more like thoracic vertebrae and as again so as you'll note you'll see the articular surfaces go with a steeper inclination about 60 degrees of inclination plus a little bit of internal rotation as they wing in in essence so the mobilizing force would need to be again mostly in that direction you know upwards rather than a straight straight in or coming down from the top now the other thing to note is that the spinous process even in C1 or T1 all the way down to T9 10 11 12 the spinous process is at a different level than the transverse processes so again look at that there's there's definite definitely a gap between the, the spinous process and the transverse process. Therefore, if you were to push directly on the spinous process, you would not be mobilizing this vertebrae necessarily. It would be running into, basically, you know, it would start levering down and bumping into the one below it. And in essence, you'd be mobilizing the one below it, basically. It, kind of again the the whole idea is that because it's not at the same level you're not doing the same thing all right so moving on let's talk a little bit about mobilizing and so as a broad rule and again we're going to show this just in the thoracic spine but the same idea occurs in the cervical spine as well that side bending and rotation occur in the same direction in the thoracic spine as well as the cervical spine so what that means is that as you side bend to the left you're getting a little bit of left rotation too as you side bend to the right you're getting a little bit of right rotation too and vice versa with yeah again side bending and rotation occur as a coupled motion in this thoracic and cervical vertebrae all right so let's just for definition's sake here when if we're talking about the ninth or ninth thoracic vertebrae as that vertebrae comes let's say you know so obviously this is looking at the right side of the T-spine as you bend away so let's say you're bending left and rotating left what happens is that this articular surface starting right here is moving up and around the other side because the other side is going down and around the same way coming down and around like that so in essence you're getting this rotational force on T9 and this is what is called opening or gapping yeah opening or gapping 
of this particular articular surface. Now again, when you're turning from one side to the other, the uh, typically the opposite is happening on the other side. So on the left side, or on the side that is not visualized, you'd have a closing, closing movement or an approximation. So with that approximation, let's we'll just go down here to this next one. With approximation, you're coming down and in to that surface. Basically, this whole thing is moving downwards, and it's generally what you'd consider approximating or coming closer. All right, so there you go. We've defined opening as coming up and away as if the joint is pulling itself apart and the closing approximation is bringing everything back together again. All right, so what happens when you start mobilizing these things? Again, it's, it's all relative. Now consider what joint you're talking about and what your goal is. So here you go. Try this out for size. In order to, let's say we're talking about this articular surface again, here on t between t T9 and T10, in order to open this, so we're going to be talking about opening, in order to open or gap this articular surface, you can, you have two options. You can take this portion of the articular surface and move it up and around to open it, or you could potentially, again this is all relative, you could fix the T9 and move the 10 down and over this direction. Basically these two surfaces are coming apart and you can do it either way. You can move T9 up and away or move T10 down and inward. Alright, so here, here comes the key. Well, let's talk about closing just briefly. We're going to go down here one facet joint. So now observe this next facet joint below. So to talk about closing, in order to close you have to do one of two things. The top vertebrae has to come down and in like that or the bottom vertebrae has to come up and around like that. There's only those two options and it's all relative. Again, making this key distinction between opening and closing a facet joint. All right, so here's the real trick. With the thoracic spine and the cervical spine, we have a heck of a time trying to give an anterior to posterior force. We simply cannot get a good handle and push through the gut and push things backwards. Therefore, we're left only with one option, a posterior to anterior mobilizing force. All right, so in order to get a posterior to anterior mobilizing force to open this T9, T10 articular facet, our option is to press on these transverse processes here of T9, pressing PA or posterior to anterior glides, posterior to anterior glides. By so doing, we move the thoracic vertebrae forward or anteriorly, and if you wanted to do this unilaterally to help with, so again, if you're doing it bilaterally, you're going to help with gross flexion. If you're doing it unilaterally, you're helping with rotation to the opposite side. So if you press on the right, so this one that we visualize, if you press on that right transverse process, it's going to rotate around to the left. Hope that makes sense. You press on the side that you're trying to open and that's the only direction, the only really option you have in pressing on the top one in order to open it. Now the other thing, or the, the opposite is also true for the closing restriction. So again, down here in the closing restriction, or the closing issue, if we want to work on the closing, you only have really one option. You can't give an anterior to posterior force, rather you must go posterior to anterior. Therefore, your only option is to press from posterior to anterior, PA glide, on the lower, so in this case we're talking about T1011 articular surfaces, you would have to press on T11 anteriorly to create a relative posterior glide on that T1011. So again, it's all relative. This is kind of mind-blowing if you haven't thought about this before, but it's all relative. You only have the posterior to anterior glide to really consider. 
generally, you know, I, maybe there'd be some exception somewhere, somehow, but as a rule, posterior to anterior glides have to follow these rules that you have to, in order to open, you press on the superior vertebrae. And so in order to open, you're pressing on the superior vertebrae. Or to close, you're pressing on the inferior vertebrae. Okay? Vertebra. Vertebra. All right, hopefully that's as clear as mud. The same thing is true in the cervical spine as well, that if you want to improve gross flexion, you would go with an opening manipulation or opening mobilization on the superior vertebra of the two joints you're talking about. You're going to go with the superior vertebra and open it forward into flexion. As you go into closing, you can't really give an anterior to posterior force, so you must give the PA glide on the inferior vertebrae to bring or to approximate those joint surfaces from the bottom up. Hopefully that makes sense. Again, don't want to beat it too far to death, but I think I've explained that. If that if it's still unclear, you might rewind and just review this one more time. But again, side bending and rotation occur in the same direction in the C spine and T spine. Therefore, if you have an issue turning left, turning left and side bending left occur in the same plane. So in order to improve turning to the left, you've got two options. You can help with the closing on the left or help with the opening on the right. And we've discussed how with opening you mobilize the superior vertebrae and with closing you mobilize the inferior vertebrae. There you go. And it'd be opposite for right rotation. Closing on the right, opening on the left. There you go. Just brief conclusion. Um, closing and approximating are essentially the are, are essentially essentially extension in the cervical and thoracic spine. And when you're working with rotation, you are unilaterally opening one side, uh, unilaterally unilaterally opening one particular facet and closing the other facet as you rotate around. Okay. Side bending and rotation occur in the same direction in the C spine, T spine. Side bending and rotation occur in the opposite direction in the lumbar spine and in C1, C2. There's still some discussion about how that coupled motion actually occurs at C1, C2. The good news is that those slight nuance, nuances are probably not going to be tested. Rather, they're going to go with the bread and butter C spine, T spine type mobilizing force. There's a great article there. At, uh, put the link there for you so you can check that out later. Anyway, this has been a, a great brief session about thoracic and cervical mobilizations. Thanks for watching. Really appreciate it.